Yo, what's up? It's Sneaks, and I like to pee pee on the narrative. We're gonna talk about the DNA of a little girl and her dad, a killer, a baby not yet born. Not gonna use the milkman's name on the horn. Was the killer a dad shiller? And was the friend, whose name will from here on out be a filler, not just a friend, but a wife stealer? You let me know what you think. I'll show you a suspicious wink. People have always claimed that this jersey and her having Celeste dressed like this is obvious proof that something was going on here, but this jersey was actually Bella's, and Miller was a pretty huge player back then, and I know for a fact it was Bella's, so I've always kind of not paid much attention to that, but it is kind of one of those funny tee the irony, right? But still, fair is fair, and this was possibly a coincidence. And just a basic case of hand-me-downs. Unless you think Shanann did it totally on purpose and that many years in advance. Objection. Whose jersey are you wearing? Uh, Willie Parker. Nice. Cece's yeah. wearing Roethlisberger. Bella's wearing Miller. I'm wearing uh, Paul Malu, my yeah. favorite. Awesome. Think? Think. And Chris is wearing Roethlisberger. So I can um, get those off to good, good, uh, I give them to a friend of mine, um, Cece's, and then Bella's, of course, go in a container downstairs in the basement um, so Cece can wear them when she uh, gets big enough to go into, grow into them. And Shanann comes through with some more gold. I have been dying to show you guys this. <laughs> So, okay, again, two thumbs up for the ambiguous BS because it's just cryptic enough to let you know what it means, but to also give any defenders. And Shanann was really not being a nice girl here. I mean, they have been hanging out at getaways, they being this woman's husband and Shanann. Shanann should have been a little nicer than that because... I think that if strangers are noticing the resemblance between these guys, that it is perfectly reasonable to assume that their friends and their family notice too, and it's perfectly reasonable to assume that Shanann knows that this might be why this chick is saying this. And she's hella mean for her response. 
As you saw there, Josh also has made comments about Celeste's inheritance, and maybe he just meant that boisterous personality, which he obviously got from her mother, who enjoyed shenanigans. Sure, okay. But I mean, it warranted three messages to get that across, and a hashtag? Total mystery. Oh, we need Scooby-Doo in the gang. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Mystery, mystery. And by the way... That guy has been on a lot of the getaways with both Chris's and Shanann and Chris as a couple. He is Cassie's husband. Cassie is who told Nicole Atkinson to call the cops on that fateful Monday. Just in case you aren't in the loop. Another person who went on those getaways often with the couples, well, she's that girl that made that comment about the leopard dress and is discussing with Shanann that is responsible for Shanann's pregnancy. Shanann defenders, which would sell their soul to convince you that there is absolutely no way possible that Shanann would have stepped out on her marriage, would argue that it is impossible since Shanann has this video where she tells everyone three friends from school got back in touch with her. We're to assume that Chris Miller is one of these friends because, well, I guess just because, 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 no, so <laughs> because Shanann said it was like 2016. And then the other Chris, in a comment to the public, says that the news was calling him after the murders and asking him what his relationship with Shanann was. So, uh, to put two and two together, yes, he does seem to be the male friend that she's referring to in the video. However, in this video, she's going to say, four friends got up with me today. Oh, actually three. And then she's only going to describe Chris. After she tells you that three friends got together, she's going to say, I'm glad he called me. He called and said this, da-da-da-da. And she also throws in this lick. Actually, three of them I have not talked to since I graduated high school, and that was in 2003. So that goes to show you how long it's been since I've spoken to them, and they reached out this morning. Okay, pretty exciting story. They also make note of where they lived, but they're usually mistaken about this part, so they're normally like, he was way in and see. How is that even possible, blah, blah, blah. But actually, it was in OKC, a much shorter drive and a much more doable trek, which his wife is seen to be doing often. She goes and visits the Watts quite a few times and has quite a few pop-ups at their home. So to say that anyone else who knew the Watts couldn't drive by and have a pop-up of their own, you know, anything for that Lala room. But the alleged other possible father is also in the military, so I imagine he they're probably used to that as a unit, so to say this isn't possible is insane and ridiculous. And I ask myself, why is this a subject that is worth discussing? And for me, it's that the possibility that it might be true and that it's at least worth asking ourselves. And it could be a part of Celeste's truth. And anyone not new to my channel knows that I care a lot about that and getting their truth out there in a certain way. So this could have implications for that, as well as there are so many family dynamic areas that would be affected by this, and Chris Watts' psyche, if this is true, and how does that not play into the crimes themselves? We have these parents, we have no idea when they really truly flipped their rocker, or when or how the girls actually truly died. So I think adding in this question is not irresponsible, because... There's been a big mystery about the disposal of the bodies, about the actual order in which the crimes occurred, meaning who was on life first. And there are just so many other hypotheticals. Take this. Chris and Shanann have this weird bedtime routine, and I've talked to a few of you about this. And, well, okay, everyone knows I beat the bedtime routine thing to death because it was really important to me, right? Because, A, everyone was like, who cares about the bedtime? Yeah, who cares about the bedtime whenever the kids were, like, murdered at night or after they got up from their bed, but moving on. So Chris puts Celeste to bed and Shanann puts Bella to bed. Shanann tells us this in her Facebook Live video during the storm where Bella wanted to stay awake. And Chris tells Tammy this before his polygraph. But if we're adding in the DNA question, wow, you got yourself up the situation. Imagine being assigned to put your adoptive daughter to bed, but not your biological daughter. That'd be kind of messed up. But of course, this is all just speaking in hypotheticals. Another one that I find worth noting whenever we're bringing up the DNA topic is that people think that Shanann favored Celeste over Bella and that Celeste got more screen time. Now, whether you think that's a good or a bad thing is up to you, but... I've always wondered if it was because Celeste was kind of becoming quite the little actress. As you can see in my last video, 
where um, she's prompted to act out the scenario where she's asking her dad to rub her shoulders during one of Shanann's like Snapchat videos. And I think that in general, she was more comfortable performing for the camera than Bella was. Obviously, she was also the youngest. You know, I've always wondered if it was a combination of those things making people think that. I believe that Celeste actually dealt with a lot of things that were hidden and that we don't actually fully understand the depths of. And she dealt with a lot that people don't know, okay? And so that's a hard thing for me to say that she was favored. If she was favored, is that a good thing? I mean, if mom has some sadistic ways of giving you attention, then that becomes quite the complicated question, doesn't it? But is the screen time possibly to be showing another dad, the glorious infant that you're taking care of by yourself? So I could see in this situation where, like, you would want to show that person, you know, like their kid or whatever, how if I'm putting myself in that position, I get that. To me, that's a pretty viable scenario and something interesting to hypothesize. What I find super crazy is that whole soul that the defenders of Shanann would sell to convince you otherwise because they believe that Chris was some narcissistic sociopath that was hiding in the shadows and that he was this dead, soulless thing that was married to this family pretending to love them for eight years before he ended their life and disposed of them horrifically, yet they don't think that it would have ever been in Shanann Watts' plans, dreams, and or ambitions to seek love or substance elsewhere, just like Chris did, because these guys were just not meant for each other at the end of the day and for the simplest way of putting it. Now, unfortunately, their family has been subjected to asking these same questions, and they've been subjected to being asked questions themselves. And when Shanam Watts was in NC with her family, and as we know, Chris wasn't answering any of her messages, and we could imagine that she was kind of grumping around the house and, you know, PO'd and telling dad, like, he's not answering my phone calls, F him, blah, blah, blah. And I could see where dad, that's his baby, you know, he's getting kind of aggravated with Chris too. So as she's saying, you know, he's eating steak and blah, 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 blah on Facebook, and he's been hearing her grump and blah, blah, blah. And so he's like, hey, how's your friend doing? You know, kind of trying to go to Chris on, which is what I often wonder if Shanann was trying to do that with Chris because, he, you know, he's an introvert. And I think she was someone who enjoyed attention. And I think that she was, in a sense, trying to rile him up. And that is really the nicest um, defense for what she does all the time with all the public posts and being super close to this other Chris on Facebook. Now, of course, this is complete speculation about Frank's meaning whenever he says, how's your friend doing? But I just, we can at least say at the very least, it's a strange response to the actual post that his daughter had made. Frankie kind of makes a more normal comment like, yeah, he's probably eating Oreos. Um, you know, he admitted that he didn't spend that much time with him. So he probably wasn't quite, you know, caught up to what actually was going on between his sister and her husband. But I think that would have been like, you know, the more appropriate type of response you're expecting. Not like, how's your friend doing? Like, what friend, Dad? Or, you know, I think maybe what friend he was talking about. But I feel kind of bad for speculating that. But he was talking about some friend, and I feel like this was a go towards Chris. Like, yeah, you're living the high life, too, here in NC, baby. Don't worry about him. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Like, that's his baby. And I get it. And while there were times where I feel like they should have told her to tone down on her family, you know, Chris was ignoring her phone calls, et cetera. She probably was in a bad way over that and he could have handled the situation better obviously as he could have many situations if I'm being fair but most importantly to me and as I've mentioned I think that friends and family were discussing this as well as the public is because people saw this resemblance and people I mean even if it meant nothing even if it's totally untrue there's a resemblance the end so I mean I think people were discussing this and if we are to believe Shanann's mother then we have no further stones to unturn as far as asking ourselves, did Chris ask this question? And so the baby was alive when her life was taken? Yes. Right? And Chris was saying to protect the self that the baby wasn't his. And then they tried to say that the baby wasn't alive. So I had to give rights of my grandson to the, to the place to to prove that the baby was alive and it was Chris's. And so there's a medical report now that confirms Absolute, that. Absolutely. Yes. So we know now that the baby was alive. Yes. And the baby was Chris's. Yes. 
So we have three children murdered here, not two. That's right. right. Hey everybody, Chris, we have Sharon, we have my Chris, <laughs> and we Everly. have Everly. Oh, and the girls are all watching, finding out what we're doing. Uh-oh, video. Oh, you on want a wave? On a wave. Wave. Oh, okay, <laughs> so she waves when I turn the camera. So it is eight o'clock at night and friends just uh, drove in that were in, um, that are from Oklahoma. I haven't seen Chris since high school. It's been, I can't tell you how long cause that's a long time and I'm getting old. Um, so we decided we're gonna keep it up all night and we're just gonna all take a pure. Um, thank you, Bonnie and Corey for the pure. You guys are absolutely amazing. The pure lady cannot go without pure. Um, hi, Brittany. Hi, everybody. Say hi, guys. Hello. Oh, I am Brittany. Okay, can you open up for me? Yep. Can't do it one handed. Hey, Morgan. All right, so. So, who's taking a pure with us? Brittany, you gonna take one with us? Cheers. I got everybody's caps. All right, we need to make a test. Can we make a test? So to 2017. Woo -hoo. Oh, I am. Woo. No. Pure is delicious. This is to 2017. We are 2017. Right, guys? Yes. Go Steelers. Christy <laughs> says hi. Christy Gibbons. Hey, Christy. We <laughs> have to call out of the Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Amazing calls tonight. Absolutely, positively the best calls of the night. Super excited about 2017 and especially excited to bring it in with some friends. So excited. All right, guys. We love you and you have a great day. Oh, you want to see Autumn? No, don't wait. What up? Autumn, say hi. Say hi, Bella. She keeps making a mess. She's making a mess. Yes. All right, guys, let's bring in 2017 with a bang. Um, remember, I have two promos going. Um, hey, Kim, I have two promos for two new promoters um, till the end of the week. Um, I'm working on one tonight, so I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> have a good night. Jessica and Jamie over there. So I am so excited because I talked to four different people today, four of them, actually three of them, I have not talked to since I graduated high school and that was in 2003. So that goes to show you how long it's been since I've spoken to them and they reached out this morning because um, one, him and his wife were really, um, they're at the point where they're ready to make a change. You know, they have children and you know, everyday life. They have kids, they work full time, they come home after a long day at work and they just are exhausted and barely can make dinner and, you know, keep their eyes open enough to even just sit down and talk to each other. So the reason why I'm, um, I'm glad that they reached out because the one thing about Chris and I, we have a, Chris and I, I think have an amazing relationship. We, we get each other. Um, I'm definitely the um, dominant one in the relationship. Um, he's very sweet. He's very calm. Um, I'm the high, high strung one in the relationship. So it's been a really good relationship. Like we we get along really well. And so I'm grateful for that. But we've been together now. And that's what our lifestyle was prior to Thrive. 
And so talking to my friend this morning, it was really, um, it brought back a flashback of how Chris and I were just over a year ago. And it's been truly nice to be able to um, come home, for Chris to come home after, you know, 11, 12 hour day, me being with the kids alone all day. I gotta invite, I have to invite your wife, hold on. Okay. Invite the wife. What's her name? Sharon. Refresh. Refresh. Alright, Chris. Here we go. Are you ready to hit refresh? Everybody's sharing Chris on. Attention Canada. I am positive. I am motivated. And I am 12K. Chris just earned his auto bonus with Lavelle, which is awesome. Sharon, go pick out your car. Did everybody just see that? This is so amazing, and I want every one of you to come with me on this journey. Thanks, Janine. Wedding cake. Wedding cake. I know that's that's a random thing to bring up, but that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Anna. What do you think about cookies and cream? What does it taste like to you? Chocolate cake. It does? Mm -hmm. Chocolate cake. I got well, the fudge. cookies and cream ice cream. I mean, not, not the ice cream. So I don't like it. I like the cookies and cream cookie uh, chocolate bar. So what do you think it tastes like? I think it tastes like um, chocolate with like vanilla, and it. it's really good. Yes, it's so it's amazing. So good. Hey, Amanda. All right, Chris. Amanda's on. Floyd. Oh. Say hi. Hey, Amanda. <laughs> He's like, He's like, I was hey, like, Amanda. wait, where? <laughs> <laughs> All right, lemon meringue, okay? Mm. Who's ready for lemon meringue? 
I think you got that is um, not lemon meringue. Can you throw your lemon yes, meringue? Yes, I can. You got this is a different one. That's cinnamon roll. That's the cinnamon roll. Oh. You have never tried cinnamon roll, right? Yes, I have. Oh, oh. That's right. All right, cheers, All right guys. Cheers. Ready? Cheers. Lemon cheers. meringue. Here we go. I hate lemon meringue like pie, lemon but this is so oh, good. My gosh. I think that one wins. This is so good, and that's I didn't really think good. I was gonna like it. And you don't like lemon meringue, just like me. I don't like, like lemon meringue either. either, but that's good. Right? That's really that's good. This they has hit the bomb yes. flavor. Yes, they hit it on the head for sure. That's really oh good. my gosh, this is so good. Good. perfection. I like What's it. it taste like to you since you don't like lemon meringue? So it's more. <laughs> this has more of a lemon zest, yeah, and I love yes. it. Yes. It's yes. not. It's not a sweetness like a lemon meringue, like yes. an actual lemon meringue. Yes. Anna, same? Or April, you yep. have in your mouth. Yes, now. I think it has like a really good flavor. It's like not too strong. Just no. let it, like a like a zest. It's yes. so good. Like a lemon head. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh, and these guys have already tried everything. Um, oh my god, Melissa, there's a big sneak peek bar. You gotta hit it up before everyone takes all of them. Um so excited. We're going to continue. We're going to venture. We still haven't ventured out to the streets of New Orleans yet, but we will. Um, they're talking about me over here, so I'm going to try to figure out what they're saying because I can't hear it. But I hear them pointing. I see it from the corner of my eye. Okay, so we're going to go. And you guys, I think you guys saw this. What up? What up? What up? What up? Look at this. This looks amazing. Look at this. Okay, so we're going to go over here. The real fun comes tonight when we go see Lenny Kravitz private. Um, so we're super excited with that. We're gonna find out where he's even holding it at. Probably in here, I think. Did you guys ask? Okay, so we'll see you guys later. I'm super excited as you can tell. Um, so much going on this weekend. Bye Amanda, bye Cass, bye Britt. Um, Brittany, I hate cookies and cream ice cream, but I do like the cookies and cream candy bar. I'm weird. Um, and I also do not like lemon meringue because I don't like lemon meringue pie. I don't like pies. I know I'm from, I'm from Jersey, but I do come from North Carolina and I don't like any pie. Not apple, not cherry, not nothing. Pumpkin pie. No, not pumpkin pie. Chocolate pie I like because, you know, it's chocolate pudding. Like, who doesn't like chocolate pudding and graham crackers? So, that's the only pie I like. I hate everything else, but this is absolutely... They hit the nail. I mean, they just hit it out of the park for sure. So I am super excited for everyone to hop on. If you guys want your um, a try one, you guys want an experience one, my customers and my promoters definitely comment below. Once they release, which is I think this weekend, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm hoping it's this weekend because we need it. Um, all right. Bye, guys. Um, busted butt to get here. We're here. We're mingling, getting to know people. Oh man, it is so nice here at this cocktail party. You guys Look, have no idea. Okay. It's so elegant and so like just beautiful. Like and look at all these people. There's so many people in here. I can't um, get it all. We're hiding in a corner so you guys can hear us a little bit better. But um, we're gonna go finish uh, mingling, having a couple of drinks. I'm gonna um, grab some food. Chris is gonna grab some food. <laughs> um, so we'll see you guys.
I'm glad that they reached out because the one thing about Chris and I, we have a, Chris and I, I think, have an amazing relationship. We, we get each other. I'm definitely the um, dominant one in the relationship. He's very sweet. He's very calm. I'm the high, high strung one in the relationship. So it's been a really good relationship. Like we've, we get along really well. And so I'm grateful for that.